Hey guys, welcome to Flytop King. Hey, you've been asking for it and it's finally here. The all new Weber Slate 30 inch griddle. Here we go. Alrighty, so we got a lot of business to take care of before we get to the slate. Um, it's finally here. We've received nothing short of 300 comments, questions, concerns, emails, Instagram, Facebook, YouTube, multiple channels, you name it, we've received it. Um, I intentionally, or no, I initially wanted the 36 inch griddle because I've always liked the 36 inch griddle. But we found out along the road that the 36 inch griddle is gonna be released later. <clears throat> With all the pressure coming our way, you guys gotta excuse me, that allergy season is here, pollen's everywhere. <laughs> <clears throat> we found out that the 36 inch griddle is gonna be released about six to eight weeks later versus this one. Since we felt so much pressure good pressure i'm not saying it's bad pressure good pressure that we decided going into the 30 inch for that way you guys can review it because with all the questions hey i'm waiting i'm waiting i'm waiting i'm waiting for my review for you guys to act and i don't want you guys to go two months down the road without doing something and number two look i got it for free um we're just at the point now where we're either going to buy it or get it for free you guys know me my opinion is not going to change listen the griddle is going to review itself which is what i've said from day one i'm just the person relaying the information and i'm just going to show you the facts the facts is we're going to do the bread test the bread test is not me. It shows what the griddle does. I'm going to put my thermo gun, whatever it's called, laser thing on the griddle and relay the information to you. You guys do with it as you will. So that being said, yes, I get it for free and we're just going to review it. I know for a fact, aesthetically pleasing, um, beautiful piece of equipment. I cannot wait to see what it does. Other than that, like all my reviews, we start from the bottom and work our way up. Let's backtrack one step. Uh, let's just talk about how easy it was put together. Although there are a lot of steps. Um, I think the manual said maybe an hour and a half. It only took us roughly an hour and 15 minutes. To be honest with you, it probably could have taken us an hour. Um, it, we always put pieces of equipment together, both of us. So if you're doing it by yourself, I can see probably it's gonna be a little bit harder, a little bit more time consuming. Uh, but with two people, it's very easy. Just to let you know, this top unit, once the base is built, actually sets inside of it. So that's where like the two people come in handy. Plus, anytime you're dealing with screws and everything's gotta be perfect, if somebody can maneuver a leg to make the hole perfect and you put the screw in there, it just helps line up. Working our way up from the bottom, we have four caster wheels, the front two lock. You guys know that I like my caster wheels. It just makes it so much easier to move around. Uh, we got the cabinet model. You guys see there. Got the shelf here. I love the second shelf. I like it because especially when I'm filming or just in general use, we always complain about not having enough shelf space. To me, it's just easy to put something dirty down there. Or if I know if I know I'm going to use it quickly or something like that, it's easy for me to take out. I've always enjoyed the second shelf right there. Working our way up, I love the new look. Uh, we can get to the aesthetics later because I do want to pinpoint some certain features that they come out with. Grease traps a lot larger. Um, seems like it's a lot more sturdy. Seems like when you pull it out, I think the first one, if I remember correctly, let's see if I can get it in the hole. I mean, you just want to be careful. Obviously, you just always keep an eye on your grease trap. You've got a lot of liquid, a lot of, um, let's say a lot of water from steaming and stuff like that. Just be careful when you pull it out, right? You don't want it to tilt and stuff like that. So I've seen it happen in the Navy. It can definitely hurt you. We have three burners on this. Obviously, they are not a battery igniter. There's no igniter on here. These are independently controlled. What you do see is the temperature dial. This is battery operated. It's got a power feature right there. We can get that later because this has a little bit more information to go over. So, um, I don't think my propane's on, but, oh yeah, it is. Um, so you hear right there, so they're each individually controlled. I like that. Moving on up, the shelves. Now, the shelves are very cool on this feature, on this griddle, because one of two things. One, the shelves are a lot bigger than the other one. Uh, just to give you a run bar, uh, ballpark, uh, 21 and a quarter. If you go all the way edge to edge to this part of the shelf, not this part, this part. Then it's a 16 and a half. You've come all the way out, it's 19, okay? So a lot bigger shelves and you just pull up and it folds down. The reason why that's important because when you stow this, that's less space. So the one thing I was gonna do real quick is I'm just gonna give you a ballpark. Okay? I always like to do my little measurements. Every time I take out the tape measure, I get a little nervous. <laughs> but up. Are we close over there? You want to do- Just close, I need Like the handle? Yeah, just the end of the, the dark gray handle, not the stainless steel. Okay, yeah, that's it. All right, roughly between 59 and 60 inches, and then just hold that right there. 
and then expand it all the way 72 inches give or take something like that so that gives you an idea uh well i've got the tape measure in my hand height wise just from the bottom of my deck to maybe the actual griddle surface not the top of the griddle the griddle surface uh probably uh 35 inches and then if we're just measuring the griddle plate uh 18 and a quarter was that 18 and a quarter 18 and a quarter by 30 and an eighth moving over here we got the little side table you just flick it open uh move it to the side and it sits right there i'm sure you can't add a lot of weight to it but you know what we complain about shelf space all the time this is perfect for those little nuances that you might need i've already put together like i said and i've already played with the features just to get a, a ballpark so i have something to say this is cool. I think it's an unintended consequence. I'm sure they didn't mean it like this, but we're gonna to get to this section really quickly. But the propane tank is extremely easy to move on and off. And as big as I am, I'm sure there's a lot of people out there that can probably agree <laughs> and a little embarrassed to say. Sometimes when you change a propane tank out, it takes a lot of, <sighs> you know, like it just takes a little bit more than what it should. This thing's easy, man. I'm telling you, you get the propane tank, you can set it on there, remove this stuff right here, and you got easy access to it. Even if you didn't have to, it's a lot easier to get to. It just hangs there. You can um, tighten it right there. But I like the fact that the shelf comes off, and then literally it's just so much easier to get to. So for a big guy, that's an unintended consequence, but cheers for that one. Hinged hood, but you cannot use the hood while cooking. Like the other one, it's disappointing. Especially when you're used to a griddle that can use a hood while cooking. Uh, definitely think that in the future, hopefully we can upgrade that. Hopefully Weber sees this video, I'm sure they will, and be like, hey, maybe we can work something out. Take a feature away and add a, a hood that can be used with cooking. I think a lot of people want one. I, we see it all the time on the Facebook group, all the comments. You want to be able to uh, dome something, steam something. It's just a lot easier to close the lid than it is to grab something else. So I'm cheerleading for you guys. And gals uh if we look at the plate before we even get to the oh man oh. before we even get to the the actual griddle on the back side of it is squared not l bracketed three independent burners uh you can see right here that each hole has a peg that would fit in and then right here is your temperature gauge so just keep an eye on that kind of like remember where that's at that's your uh, pressure point for your dial okay the one thing I have noticed while putting together, which I think sucks, is as far as I know right now, um, and I could be wrong, I've tried it, but you can't level your griddle. These screws don't come out. With me having an uneven deck, <laughs> that sucks, but uh, hopefully we can find a... Ooh, that fit right in there. First time. As for the griddle, this is supposed to be rust resistant. And it's supposed to be edge to edge, even heating. You know, for a fact that the first time I cook on this, I can't tell if it's going to rust. So when you ask me if it's going to rust, I have no idea. So we can get that down the road. If it does, I'll be glad to show you. If it doesn't, I'll be glad to show you. I'm going to be cooking on it. So you guys can see, I'm not going to hide anything and we can address that if it does come up. So I can't talk about the rust. I do know that it has a rust feature on there. So we'll see how long it lasts. It also says it comes pre-seasoned. We've only had one other griddle camp chef that i know of that comes pre-season we decided to season that griddle that's way before that was like three years ago but that's before we even got into griddle cooking although it was our first griddle we still didn't have a clue what we we're doing so i would like not to season the griddle because if the package says pre-seasoned ready to cook then i think you should be able to cook on it right out of the box because that's what you're expecting in the manual, it says if you want to season it, season it three to two, two to three times or something like that. So not really sure which way to go. I'm just going to try, try to um, go with the unseasoned method, even though it comes pre-seasoned, because that's just the decision that like we made before we started the video. So we're going to try it out. Looking at the shelf system right here, you guys can see the notches are in there. I'm sure that's to help to cool down the shelf. Right here, we got some wind guards. They got the notches in there as well. I'm sure it helps kill, uh, cool that down. On the other model... We did not have wind guards, so a lot of people complained about the wind coming in there. It looks like they kind of uh, hit on that feature. It has a little indention right here on both sides. It looks like it's a great place to uh, grab the griddle if you need to remove the griddle top. Obviously, I don't need to tell you. Make sure the griddle's cool. We don't need to touch it while it's hot. You know, disclaimer, I guess. So, all right. 
I do like the hinge hood, although you guys know that I cannot cook, or I guess I could, but I do not cook with my um, uh, the hoods because of the way the uh, the filming happens. I like to be in front of the camera like this. So we'll have to take the hood off, which sucks, but it does look like it's a good, stable hinge hood. And the aesthetics looks really good. So what I think they've done before we even get started with like the accessories and stuff is they've like really addressed the point of upping the game on the aesthetics. The old one, even on the video, I never took it down. I stood true to my word. I was so disappointed in the first one that came out being, you know, like a fan of Weber on the backside. And I was like, man, I just cannot believe this is what they came out with. This is not the same feeling. Like this is literally like, I've got their Summit Charcoal Grill. Um, and this matches right up there with it. Like the stainless steel, the red, the big bulky knobs, everything you want. Like, I really like the way it looks, but I don't care the way it looks. I care about the way it cooks. Cause the other one, although it looked bad, was one of my favorite griddles of all time. You know, like it ranked right up there between two and three every single day, just depending on what I was doing. So, uh, let's get to the accessories. Super excited about the accessories. I've already played with them a little bit on the back end just cause I really, really like them. Um, you guys can pick and choose what you want. So this side shelf is the only one that does it. It does not come down because obviously the propane tank and this shelf right here. So that's the only one that unlocks, but this comes off. You see the little handles right there. Getting to my favorite part of the whole thing so far are these little tool caddy bins. So I've got two of them. I'm just gonna show you really quickly. So you remove that metal piece, you can put your tool caddy in on top of the tool caddy comes a lid slash shelf if you don't want it there you can slide it there and that covers that hole completely obviously you can mix and match you can do vice versa you can do two two uh caddies whatever you decide to buy whatever it comes with it there's other models available at ace there's other models available online you guys can just look at the price look at the option that you guys want i'm sure the function of the griddle uh, and all this is the same. It's just all the other cool little features that come with it just vary a little bit. So I like this. I, I really like it a lot. The tool caddy. Um, if you had two of these, you can set this aside on this side of the stainless steel and use it to put your spatulas or something like that to keep everything uh, like a little bit cleaner. I'm one messy cook. And then the tool caddy is pretty cool in the fact that it can hold, just give you an idea of how wide it is, right? So bottles, oils, waters, Shameless plug. Yep. <laughs> See? And then you can take this inside, bring it in outside. I don't care what you do with it. I enjoy it. I like it. Um, I can't wait to use it. I think it's pretty fun. So that gives you like a kind of idea of the size for that. And then when I was playing around, I found something cool because I typically don't do this. There's a little bin thing. But then it comes with like, it fits my perfect paper towels. Look at that. I've got paper towels that blow around all the time. But man, you just keep that in there. I like it. But these are separate, so you can guys can pick and choose whatever you want to. They make a trash can uh, little thing that you can hook on like these, and it holds a trash bag. Uh, they make a um, paper towel holder as well. All right, so the way the video is going to go, I think I have a game plan of what I want to do, because ultimately, you guys know how I do my griddles, the toast test, and is it even? And I like a low temperature, right? The very first griddle we got from Weber hovered around 325, I think, after about 10 minutes. Uh, our Traeger stays about 380. It'd be interesting to see what this does on low, and it's interesting to see what it does on high. I am also interested, after experiencing the Traeger for so long and cooking on it, what kind of zone cooking are we going to get? We're going to be able to see that on the bread test. Since the bread has two different sides, we'll do the bread test on one side, flip it over, crank up one of these dials on high, medium, and low, and then you'll get a good visual representation of if we can zone cook. Remember, I'm going to get to that later because that's important. So first things first, on low for 10 minutes. All right, to piggyback on this dial just a little bit, I'm gonna go ahead and turn it on now. It's been about five minutes. And the reason for that is because we just did what the manual said. It said that this really won't read um, temperatures like close to 250. So anything like as soon as you turn it on, if you turn this on, it's not gonna register. So you need to wait till your griddle heats up just a little bit before you even turn this on. All right, about eight, seven seconds left, six, pretty close to us. So I ain't that dang nit picky. All right, so this says 259. So here we go. So just to give you an idea, we're just gonna sweep across it right above the burner. Uh, uh, 294, 300 across that burner, 300 across that burner, 
I mean, 295. To get technical, that's probably 295, 297, 306. So for me, that's extremely even, right? The problem I have is the last 10 minutes is we're not necessarily shooting close to that temp. So the digital dial, like I mentioned, is right here, okay? So if you shoot that temp right there, it's a lot closer. This is in between the burner as well. So the very first thing I think of is you can use this as a guide, but I wouldn't necessarily rely on it. If you took this out of it completely, then I think we're shooting even across the board. Adding that might throw you off a little bit, but I wouldn't worry about that too much, okay? So kind of like up at the top, 278, 305, 259. It's right next to that hole. We can leave with that. We'll shoot in the middle of the eyes. 271, 287, 264. So that's 20 degrees off, 10 degree increments. That's fantastic. Uh, 308, 313. 300, 300, 300, what'd I say? 318, that's 15 degrees off, that's fantastic. Uh, 289, 300, so that could be a cool spot right there. Uh, this bread is not used for store consumption, it's old, it's stale, and it works just fine. We'll stop it at the one minute mark, just to be fair. So. The only reason why we do this is because all it does is show you a visual representation of your hot spots. Just make sure your bread's down flat, right? It's not curled up on the edges, stuff like that. We ran out of bread right there. I mean, yeah. If that's going to be your worry, then we got a lot of other real estate space to deal with. We actually probably move this piece of bread if you wanted to here because since there's a grease trap there, I assume there's no heat coming through the grease trap. Not like there would be there. So there, is that good enough? All right, we've got about a minute and 20 seconds left. That's good enough for me. So now what I'm doing is trying to flip it. It's where you can see the color. So we should flip down, not up. A little hot zone right there. It's coming off that middle burner. I bet this is gonna be the same thing. Seems like the toast is sticking. All right, so the bread is what the bread is. It shows exactly what the gun showed. It showed, I'm surprised there's a little hot spot right there, but honestly, most griddles have one somewhere, somehow that's right in the middle of the griddle. I'd assume that. We noticed that on the gun, this side down here was low. Uh, I'm surprised about the little spot right there. I mean, honestly, I'm not really worried about it, but you know, down here's a uh, cool. I'd expect that because of the uh, grease trap. And then right here on the top left corner. So there's your vi visualization. All right, so this is what we're gonna do really quick. Uh, now we're going to do zone cooking, okay? So low, medium, high. And the reason for that is I want this bread to burn. If this bread burns, we're excited. It's not because I burned bread is supposed to burn. You're on high, the temperature is going to rise naturally. This should be a medium color, and this should be the same color as it was before it got to here, right? So this should be close to this color. All right, now I'm going to turn everything back on low because I'm telling you it's been five minutes and I can already tell that we're going to achieve what I'm looking for. You notice how this side of the griddle is smoking, this side of the griddle is not? That's because I feel like this side of the griddle is hotter. Obviously, it should be, but how much more? We're about to find out. Ooh. Ooh. Well, that's what you want. So, you, I, know you're, I know some people say, oh, he burnt toast. No, 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 no. This is what we're looking for. Well, that's interesting. That still didn't burn down there. So that's definitely a cool spot on the bottom right. See that, how much more even it is? That means when this griddle uh, heats up, you're getting a lot more even heating. See, it got darker, which means the heat's spreading. That's interesting. It follows that line right there, which is right above that burn. So it looks like the left side of that burner is just a hair hotter. And now we're getting that edge to edge heating. So it might not be even edge to edge heating as much as they say it is. I am surprised about that right there. That's obviously a hot spot on this side of the burner. It literally looks like if you took a line and go straight up that burner, maybe right above that burner, but shows you this is hot and this is uh, cooler. So we'll be able to zone cook on it, which is pretty cool. I turned the grill up on high because honestly, I just want to see what high is on this thing. Um, I did buy a new temp gun from Therm Pro. And the reason is we've had a lot of people complain that when I show my gun, even on the video, they, they can't see it very well. And so this is the difference. So hopefully this helps. It's not really about which gun's better or whatever. This is just about, you guys can see this better when I teach you about temperatures. Just playing around with it. Maybe this echoes what I was saying earlier. That says 528. So if you put your gun there, that says 469. 
475, so that's like what, uh, 50 degrees off. So that's a lot closer. So 528, 566, which is exactly what we saw when we put the bread test down, that there is a hot spot. And you got, uh oh, you can actually see the whiting of the griddle, which is, we'll get to it later. Yeah, you see it over here too. Yep. And this is, this, that's perfect. The reason why this is cooler and lagging is because this was on low. Okay. What I'm noticing right away is with my test, I, I might have, I might have done this wrong. The point is, I'm noticing that my griddle is white. Anytime you see a white griddle, that means that it's too dry. You're going to need to address that, you know, pretty quickly. So I did not want to season this griddle because I wanted to test it out with food before just to see what the pre-season looks like. And it's because I'm turning it up on high that we're getting there. We need to address the white spot. So I'm going to eventually, like right now, I have to throw down a layer of uh, oil just to protect my griddle. I'm not going to ruin it on purpose. Um, the white is an indicator that your griddle's dry. So that's not what I planned on, but this is just what griddle cooking is about. So high heat oil, avocado oil. While that's burning off, the one thing I do want to say, and this is only my opinion, uh, I think more griddles get out there when we're going to be able to learn this very quickly. Because I know somebody's going to do it. I know somebody's going to say it. Just because this griddle is pre-seasoned does not mean that it stays seasoned. You are going to have to keep this seasoned like every other griddle. It just comes pre-seasoned. I just want to reiterate that. 600. 650. And 600. That's pretty good to me. I mean, that's going to sear anything you want to. So I'm going to turn it off. No reason to waste propane. Overall thoughts. Let's just get the meat and bones out of the way. Weber says it's edge to edge, even heating. I didn't see that. I, I didn't. Does that mean it's going to be a good griddle or a great griddle or not a bad griddle? It's up to you. You know, you guys cook on it, all that stuff. I do think that the features definitely have been upgraded significantly versus original griddle. I'm sure that comes with a price as well. Um, the one thing that we would say is maybe as a consumer, maybe I just got overhyped about it. Maybe I just looked at it wrong. Maybe I interpreted it wrong. I would think that as a consumer, you would look at this dial right here and say, that's the temperature of the griddle. We never found that. We found that the spot where that thermometer was obviously was a lot closer. The problem is I feel like a lot of people would anticipate that dial being their temperature griddle representation. And that's not the truth. Once you start zone cooking, you can see how that can be difficult. But even on low with all griddle, the all burners on low, with enough preheat time, we found like not only was it uh, uneven, that the dial did not necessarily represent the griddle across the board. Okay, so is that a make it or break it for you? It's not for me, right? On the Traeger, they had a feature on there for the propane sensor um, where you plug it in and all that stuff. I never used it, but it's the feature that came on with it. Um, I didn't use it. It didn't make it or break it for me. So it's more about the cooking experience. It's more about what things come with it. And we're going to be showcasing that. So as soon as we get done cutting this video, we're going to be starting on that big breakfast. You guys know how we've done it in the past. We throw down the big breakfast and do the homemade pancakes because we feel like those pancakes spread a little bit. You get a little more coverage. We can see that, see if it translates the same way. Same thing with hash browns, same thing with bacon, sausage, and eggs. If you guys are interested, hit that join button down below. It's a membership program. We thank each and every one of you for taking time for doing so. You can check us out on The Griddle Group on Facebook, where we talk about griddles. And I'm telling you, this one right here is the number one uh, hot topic button for sure for the last couple of weeks. Thanks for watching. Don't forget to press that subscribe button. Pound the notification button. Share it with your friends. Peace. Big breakfast coming up. I already got the ingredients.